Today I'm gonna to go through five reasons why you can't do a freestanding handstand push-up. Number one, you're not strong enough. Now this is gonna be different for everyone because it depends how good you are at handstand push-ups. The better you become at handstand push-ups, the less strength you actually need because your technique will help you. The balance will help you. But obviously there's a guideline of prerequisites that we have in terms of strength. So there's the normal push-ups, there's the pike push-ups. Can you do this comfortably for repetitions with control and even hold a conversation while you're doing them? Now a lot of people think that you need to be able to strict barbell press your body weight to be able to do a freestanding handstand push-up. But my body weight is 80 kilos and my one rep strict press is around 74 to 76 kilos. And I can do 10 handstand push-ups. So you can see that's not correct. However, having a good foundation of overhead pressing strength, whether it's dumbbells, barbells, or kettlebells is definitely gonna help. But I'd prefer clients to be building good upper body strength using body weight exercises like push-ups, dips, pike push-ups, ring muscle-ups, and things like that. And a good test just to see whether you have the strength to do one handstand push-up freestanding is to see whether you can comfortably do a handstand push-up against the wall, keeping the body in one piece. You'll see I'm walking my toes back up, but that's because I don't wanna lose any toenails on the bricks. But I can do, I don't know, five or six reps on here before it gets uncomfortable it starts to become a real challenge. But as you become better at the handstand push-up, the freestanding version, you can actually use the overbalance to help pull you out of the position and it becomes easier than the wall version. So we can look at repetitions at things like the chest wall handstand push-up, but we can also look at time under tension. So do you have the ability to go down eccentrically at a slow controlled speed? So again, lots of time under tension as you lower. So again, I'm gonna start in that push-up position, create one segment, I'm gonna take the head down towards the floor, nice and slow with control, and make sure there's no gaps in the strength throughout the full range of motion till my head touches. You could do that head to floor, or even better, you could go to an eccentric on boxes or P-bars. Number two, you're simply not balanced enough. You don't have enough room for error in terms of your handstand balance. So to do a freestand handstand push-up, we need to have the ability to be able to find your balance when the body is out of its correct position or out of its ideal position. So when I handstand, everyone's looking for this type of position, this sweet spot where everything's stacked. But in reality, when we do our handstand push-up, the body's gonna change position, position at the shoulder, at the elbows, at the feet, at the extension, at the flexion of the body, and everything in between. So if you can't hold balance when those things are happening, consistently rep to rep, you're gonna find it really hard to stay up for enough time, but also just catch and rebalance when you need to. So constantly working on your balance, not only in the handstand push-up pathway, but also in all the positions and shapes that are seen as the foundations to handstand balance. So making sure that you can obviously kick up to a straight handstand, but you can also hold a straddle handstand. You can hold a tuck. Tuck is super important for developing the upper traps, back and shoulders, and understanding how to control the handstand using those muscles. So the balance of the handstand itself is just something you can constantly refine and keep working on forever. Number three is lack of understanding of the actual pathway of the handstand push-up. So where do the shoulders need to go? Where do the feet need to go? Now to understand this, I'd first focus on the bottom position and what it needs to look like. So we're trying to create a triangle between our head and our hands. So for the setup, I like to have external rotation, head or forehead just lightly kissing the floor. Now notice I've made a triangle between the head and the hands. Now the distance my head goes away from the hands is gonna dictate what needs to happen on the other side up above. So when my head is forwards of the hands at this position, my feet need to be backwards at the same rate. And then when I come back up out of the handstand, push up, I realign everything. And then notice when I come back down, the shoulders come forwards, the feet come backwards, and I come back to that triangle position. I would always dictate where the feet need to be by where the head is in terms of what the distance is away from the hands. The further the head is away, the further the feet need to be away. So when I do a 90 degree handstand push up, my head comes all the way forwards of the hands, the feet come backwards. And then when you come back up, the feet go back on top as the shoulders come back on top of the hands. And we can practice that pathway with all the progressions. So when I do a pike push up, I come forwards, I'm stacked, then the shoulders come forwards, 
I bend the arms, the head keeps coming forwards to this point, and then when I reverse it back up, the head and shoulders come back on top of the hands, and everything stacks again. So as I go down, head and shoulders come forwards, kiss the floor, come back again, the shoulders align back on top of the hands. If I'm doing a partial range drill to a target, I'll set the target up at the right distance away from my hands. So if it's higher up, the head's gonna come out to a certain point relevant to the depth of the handstand. So for this height, I've positioned there to make the triangle. So block is slightly in front of the fingers. I bring the head and shoulders forwards, kiss the block before returning back again. If the block is lower, it's a little bit further away. And now when I come down, the head comes forwards, kisses the target, comes back up, repositions back on top. Now that understanding of what happens to the feet and the shoulders can make the handstand push up very easy because when I come back up, it can take the feet over towards overbalance, pulls me out of that bottom of that handstand push up back into my handstand again. It's exactly the same feeling as when I do a crow to handstand where I'm using the hips to come up as the shoulders come down that catapults me up. That's why the crow to handstand, when you get it right, is relatively easy compared to a handstand push up because you're getting that pathway of the shoulders and the hips moving together to help and seesaw you up into the handstand. Number four, you're training the wrong progression. Now a simplified way of looking at this is that we have a certain progression where we can do three to five repetitions. They're gonna be your working sets. These are the ones that we're gonna do multiple reps and sets of to get stronger and stronger. Then we'll have your one to two rep max. This is where you're working the skill of the movement, but there's a lot less volume. So I could be working three to five repetitions of the pike push-up. I could make that harder if I need to by going to one foot, working to a deficit or raising the feet up. But I want to get those three to five repetitions. And then I rest, repeat for another set, and I do that for three to five sets. And then I could go into the skill work or the one to two repetitions where I might be working towards that target. Maybe it's freestanding. And this is where I'm gonna to aim to get one to two, but it might be messy. And I'm gonna to have to face the fact that occasionally I'm gonna fall out of that. So in terms of a training sets and reps, it's not ideal because I'm not gonna get my volume, but it's fun and I'm playing with that one to two rep skill. But my main working sets need to be in those easier variations that are gonna make me stronger towards the skill. Number five, not enough training. So if you really wanna achieve a handstand push-up, I'd recommend that you're training at least three or four times a week towards that skill alone. Plus, you're also working on your handstand balance. So a nice simple way of looking at it and the way I personally train is to alternate straight arm strength and bent arm strength. So straight arm strength could be your press handstand, your planches, your levers, your skin the cats, movements like that. And then your bent arm session could be your handstand push-ups, your chin-ups, push-ups, rows, muscle-ups, things like that. And then all you do is alternate those. So every time you train, you do some balance work followed by one of your strength sessions. And then you just alternate the days with a rest day and occasionally, depending on your conditioning, your current level. But then what that should equal is that you're training your handstand push-ups three to four times per week and your handstand balance four to six times per week. So I'd recommend you look back at your previous training over the last few weeks and months and see how many times you've been training the handstand push-up and be realistic. Are you doing enough? Do you need to increase the time, the number of working sets and not just the play and double check points one to four. If you're interested in coaching, check out my app. Let me know down in the comments where you are with your handstand push-ups and if you have any questions regarding your training and I'll speak to you in the next one. Thanks guys.